Achilles Wrath Heavenly Goddess, sing That wrath which hurled to Pluto's gloomy reign The souls of mighty chiefs untimely slain Whose limbs unburied on the naked shore Devouring dogs and hungry vultures tore Since great Achilles and Atrides strove Such was the sovereign doom and such the will of Jove. Declare, O Muse, in what ill-fated hour sprung the fierce strife, from what offended power Latona's son a dire contagion spread, and heaped the camp with mountains of the dead. The king of men his reverent priest defied, and for the king's offence the people died. Ye kings and warriors, may your vows be crowned, and Troy's proud walls lie level with the ground. May Jove restore you when your toils are o'er, safe to the pleasures of your native shore. God of the silver bow, thy shafts employ, avenge thy servant, and the Greeks destroy. Thus Chryses prayed, the favouring power attends, and from Olympus' lofty tops descends. Breathing revenge, a sudden night he spread, and gloomy darkness rolled about his head. The fleet in view, he twanged his deadly bow, and hissing fly the feathered fates below. On mules and dogs the infection first began, and last the vengeful arrows fixed in man. For nine long nights, through all the dusky air, the pyres, thick flaming, shot a dismal glare. But ere the tenth revolving day was run, inspired by Juno, Thetis' godlike son, convened to council all the Grecian train, for much the goddess mourned her heroes slain. Rising o'er the rest, Achilles, Thus the king of men addressed, Why leave we not the fatal Trojan shore, And measure back the seas we crossed before? The plague destroying whom the sword would spare, Tis time to save the few remains of war. But let some prophet, or some sacred sage, Explore the cause of great Apollo's rage, Shall dying Greece restore, And Phoebus dart his burning shaft, no more. Beloved of Jove Achilles, wouldst thou know why angry Phoebus bends his fatal bow? First, give thy faith and plight a prince's word of sure protection by thy power and sword. For though we deem the short-lived fury past, tis sure the mighty will revenge at last. E'en by that god I swear who rules the day, to whom thy hands the vows of Greece convey, and whose blessed oracles thy lips declare. Long as Achilles breathes this vital air, Apollo's vengeance for his injured priest. Nor will the gods' awakened fury cease, but plagues shall spread, and funeral fires increase. The spoils of cities raised, and warriors slain, that trick of tyrants may be borne by slaves. I'm thy slave no more, my fleet shall waft me to Thessalia's shore. Left by Achilles on the Trojan plain, what spoils, what conquests shall Atrides gain? Strife and debate thy restless soul employ, and wars and horrors are thy savage joy. Launch thy vessels, fly with speed away, rule thy own realms with arbitrary sway, and hence to all our hosts it shall be known that kings are subject to the gods alone. Now fired by wrath, and now by reason cooled. That prompts his hand to draw the deadly sword, force through the Greeks and pierce their haughty lord. Just as in anguish of suspense he stayed, while half unsheathed appeared the glittering blade, Minerva, swift, descended from above, sent by the sister and the wife of Jove, the progeny of Jove replies, To calm thy fury I forsake the skies, 
Let great Achilles to the gods resign, To reason yield the empire o'er his mind. Then let revenge no longer bear the sway, Command thy passions, and the gods obey. Hard as it is, my vengeance I suppress. Those who revere the gods, the gods will bless. Observant of the blue-eyed maid, Then in the sheath returned the shining blade. The goddess, swift to high Olympus flies, And joins the sacred senate of the skies. O oh, monster, mixed of insolence and fear, Thou dog in forehead, but in heart a deer, Scourge of thy people, violent and base, Sent in Jove's anger on a slavish race, When flushed with slaughter, Hector comes to spread The purpled shore with mountains of the dead, Then rage in bitterness of soul to know, This act has made the bravest Greek thy foe, he spoke, and furious hurled against the ground, his scepter starred with golden studs around. Then sternly silent sat, with like disdain, the raging king returned his frowns again. To calm their passion with the words of age, slow from his seat arose the Pylian sage, experienced Nestor, in persuasion skilled, words sweet as honey, from his lips distilled, lives there a chief to match Pyrithous fame, Dryas the bold, Orsinius' deathless name, Theseus, endued with more than mortal might, or Polyphemus, like the gods in fight. Strongest of men, they pierced the mountain boar, ranged the wild deserts red with monsters' gore, and from their hills the shaggy centaurs tore. Thee the first honours of the war adorn, Like gods in strength, and of a goddess born. Leave me, O king, to calm Achilles' rage, Rule thou thyself, as more advanced in age. Forbid it, gods, Achilles should be lost, The pride of Greece, and bulwark of our host. Here on the monarch's speech Achilles broke, And furious, thus and interrupting spoke, Tyrant, I well deserved thy galling chain, To live thy slave, and still to serve in vain, Should I submit to each unjust decree. Command thy vassals, but command not me, The gods command me to forgive the past, But let this first invasion be the last, For know thy blood, when next thou darest invade, shall stream in vengeance on my reeking blade. Achilles with Patroclus took his way, where near his tents his hollow vessels lay. Meantime, Atrides launched with numerous oars, a well-rigged ship for Chrysa's sacred shores. Whole hecatombs were laid, and bulls and goats to Phoebus' altars paid. The sable fumes in curling spires arise, And waft their grateful odours to the skies. The army thus in sacred rites engaged, Atrides still with deep resentment raged. But first and loudest to your prince declare, That lawless tyrant whose commands you bear. Unmoved as death Achilles shall remain, Though prostrate Greece shall bleed at every vein, Unskilled to judge the future by the past, In blood and slaughter shall repent at last. From Thebe, sacred to Apollo's name, Aetian's realm, our conquering army came, With treasure loaded and triumphant spoils, Whose just division crowned the soldier's toils. The fleet he reached, and lowly bending down, Held forth the scepter and the laurel crown, Entreating all, but chief implored for grace, The brother kings of Atreus' royal race. The first the assembled chiefs incline, To avert the vengeance of the power divine. Thou thy suppliant son attend, To high Olympus' shining court ascend. The monster titan came, Whom gods Briarius, men Aegeon name. Through wandering skies, enormous stalked along, 
Not he that shakes the solid earth so strong. With giant pride at Jove's high throne he stands, and brandished round him all his hundred hands, conjure him far to drive the Grecian train, to hurl them headlong to their fleet and main, to heap the shores with copious death, and bring the Greeks to know the curse of such a king. Let Agamemnon lift his haughty head, o'er all his wide dominion of the dead, and mourn in blood, that ere he durst disgrace the boldest warrior of the Grecian race. Yet what I can, to move thy suit I'll go, to great Olympus, crowned with fleecy snow. Meantime, secure within thy ships, from far, behold the field, not mingle in the war. Then will I mount the brazen dome, and move the high tribunal of immortal Jove. The goddess spoke, the rolling waves unclose, then down the steep she plunged from whence she rose. So Chryses prayed, Apollo heard his prayer, and now the Greeks their hecatomb prepare. Between their horns the salted barley threw, and with their heads to heaven the victims slew. The limbs they sever from the enclosing hide, the thighs selected to the gods divide. The priest himself before his altar stands, and burns the offering with his holy hands, pours the black wine and sees the flames aspire. The youth with instruments surround the fire, the thighs thus sacrificed and entrails dressed, the assistants part, transfix and roast the rest. With hymns divine the joyous banquet ends, the paeans lengthen till the sun descends. The Greeks restored, the grateful notes prolong, Apollo listens and approves the song. The stern Achilles, steadfast in his hate, nor mixed in combat, nor in council joined, but wasting cares lay heavy on his mind. In his black thoughts, revenge and slaughter roll, and scenes of blood rise dreadful in his soul. Twelve days were passed, and now the dawning light the gods had summoned to the Olympian height. There, far apart, and high above the rest, the Thunderer sat, where old Olympus shrouds his hundred heads in heaven, and props the clouds. Fame is at least by heavenly promise due, to life so short, and now dishonoured too. Avenge this wrong, O ever just and wise, let Greece be humbled, and the Trojans rise, till the proud king and all the Achaean race shall heap with honours him they now disgrace. And sighing, thus the god replies, who rolls the thunder o'er the vaulted skies. What hast thou asked? Ah, why should Jove engage in foreign contests and domestic rage, the gods' complaints and Juno's fierce alarms, while I, too partial, aid the Trojan arms? He spoke, and awful bends his sable brows, shakes his ambrosial curls and gives the nod, the stamp of fate and sanction of the god. High heaven, with trembling, the dread signal took, and all Olympus to the centre shook. Swift to the seas profound the goddess flies, Jove to his starry mansions in the skies. The shining synod of the immortals wait the coming god, and from their thrones of state, arising silent, wrapped in holy fear, before the majesty of heaven appear. Trembling they stand, while Jove assumes the throne, all but the gods' imperious queen alone. Seek not thou to find the sacred counsels of almighty mind. Involved in darkness lies the great decree, nor can the depths of fate be pierced by thee. 
What fits thy knowledge, thou the first shall know, the first of gods above, and men below. But thou nor they shall search the thoughts that roll deep in the close recesses of my soul. What fatal favour has the goddess won to grace her fierce, inexorable son? Perhaps in Grecian blood to drench the plain and glut his vengeance with my people slain. Then thus the god, O restless fate of pride, that strives to learn what heaven resolves to hide. Vain is the search, presumptuous and abhorred, anxious to thee and odious to thy lord. Let this suffice, the immutable decree, no force can shake, what is, that ought to be. Goddess, submit, nor dare our will withstand, but dread the power of this avenging hand. The united strength of all the gods above in vain resists the omnipotence of Jove. The thunderer spoke, nor durst the queen reply. A reverent horror silenced all the sky. The feast disturbed, with sorrow Vulcan saw his mother menaced and the gods in awe. Peace at his heart and pleasure his design. Thus interposed the architect divine. The wretched quarrels of the mortal state are far unworthy gods of your debate. Let men their days in senseless strife employ. We in eternal peace and constant joy. Thou, goddess mother, with our sire comply, nor break the sacred union of the sky, lest roused to rage he shake the blessed abodes launch the red lightning and dethrone the gods. If you submit, the thunderer stands appeased. The gracious power is willing to be pleased. Thus Vulcan spoke, and rising with a bound, the double bowl with sparkling nectar crowned, which held to Juno in a cheerful way. Goddess, he cried, be patient and obey. Once in your cause, I felt his matchless might, hurled headlong down from the ethereal height, tossed all the day in rapid circles round, nor till the sun descended touched the ground. Breathless I fell, in giddy motion lost, the Scythians raised me on the Lemnian coast, he said, and to her hands the goblet heaved, which with a smile the white-armed queen received. Then to the rest he filled, and in his turn, each to his lips applied the nectared urn. Vulcan with awkward grace his office plies, and unextinguished laughter shakes the skies. Thus the blessed gods the genial day prolong, in feasts ambrosial and celestial song. Apollo tuned the lyre, the muses round, with voice alternate, aid the silver sound. Meantime, the radiant sun to mortal sight, descending swift, rolled down the rapid light. Then to their starry domes, the gods depart, the shining monuments of Vulcan's art. Jove on his couch reclined his awful head, and Juno slumbered on the golden bed.